Welcome St. John's to this episode of Eye of the Storm. I'm Natalie Borokov. And I'm Liam Armstrong. We have the top stories from St. John's and beyond and we're bringing them straight to you. This is Eye of the Storm. Beginning with the top event in current politics, with both governor and midterm elections coming up on Tuesday, November 6th, New Yorkers are blatantly demonstrating their views in the polls. After defeating Cynthia Nixon in the race for Democratic representative incumbent, Andrew Cuomo displays over a 20% lead over his Republican rival, Mark Molinaro. Nixon, however, is still running as an independent candidate with Howie Hawkins of the Green Party. For the Senate seat, current Senator and Democrat Kristen Gillibrand polls 28 points higher than her Republican counterpart, Shel Farley. In fact, Gillibrand's probable re-election has also been speculated to be used as a gateway for the presidential race in 2020. Furthermore, midterms also yield elections for 27 district chairs, nine of which are currently Republican, 17 Democrat, and one open seat in New York State. However, unlike the 2016 midterms, the Republican chairs, chairs seem to be leaning less towards their approval for Republican President Donald Trump. Despite who wins, everyone 18 and older should be encouraged to come out and vote on November 6th. In more politics, the Wall Street Journal reported U.S. President Donald Trump is deploying 5,200 troops with upwards of 15,000 troops to the U.S.-Mexico border in response to a caravan of about 4,000 migrants making its way by foot to the United States. Trump has seized on the issue to energize his conservative base for the midterm elections. He alleged voters that gang members and other perceived undesirable peoples are mixed into the caravan while warning that vehicle that the U.S. military will be waiting at the border. Trump's critics call the move a political ploy that will hurt American U.S. Re readiness abroad. Combined with the 2,000 National Guard troops already at the border, this deployment exceeds the combined military presence in both Syria and Iraq from the United States. Officials have stated that the troops being deployed are not expected to enforce immigration law. St. John's is home to many individuals with different talents and interests. This week, we are featuring one of those wonderful students in a student spotlight. Let's meet Amber Reese. Hey guys, it's your girl here, Alana Loren Bathia, and I'm here with Amber Reese for WRED-TV Student Spotlight. All right. Um, how is it like to be an RA on campus? Uh, being an RA is I would best describe it as a fruitful challenge. Um, it's definitely a really challenging job. Um, a lot of things come up that you just have to respond to in the moment. Um, but at the same time, uh, actually having care for residents and wanting to make their, well, for me, I'm in the freshman dorm this year, um, trying to make their experience a great one their first year on campus mm -hmm. is really why I do what I do. Um, so that makes all the challenges work. So you're also the president of Spectrum. So can you tell us about Spectrum and can you also allow about what your guys' organization's goal is. So I'm actually no longer the president of Spectrum, fun oh. fact. Um, a lot of people don't actually know that because I kind of just stepped down incognito um, at the beginning. I can speak on my experience last year being president. Um, I really appreciated the opportunity to be able to like be that. Um, being a queer woman of color is something that's a very, uh, I think nuanced experience for each individual but for me um, it just means being authentically myself at all mm -hmm. times so being able to be the president of that organization I, I, I like the um, the direction that we're taking this year um, we have a lot of cool stuff that we want to bring into fruition a lot of new ideas um, but basically we're just here to service the um, LGBTQ community or GSM gender sexual minority if you will well there you have it guys thank you Amber for being here with me and make sure that you check out spectrum on campus thanks guys it's great getting to know some new faces on campus in more news in a horrific anti-semitic field tragedy on Saturday October 27th a mass shooting took place at Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, free of life synagogue, taking the lives of 11 members inside. Six other worshippers were injured, as well as police responders in what is being called the deadliest anti-Semitic attack in U.S. history. The terroristic perpetrator burst into the morning service shouting anti-Semitic epithets as he fired at the worshippers with a legally purchased assault rifle and three handguns. Police quickly responded, and after a shootout with the killer, he was taken into custody and sent to a nearby hospital. Three days following, President Trump visited the city amidst protests to meet the mourning families of victims. Locals of the neighborhood, known for peace, 
and acceptance have held vigil mil had multiple vigils to honor those lost not as victims of hate but as citizens to be remembered in love throughout the month of october various democratic party members as well as known trump critics have re received over a dozen mail bombs the packages are suspected to have been sent by florida native Caesar Sayok Jr., who has a previous criminal background and after being arrested on the 26th, is currently in court for the case. The perpetrator had constructed a list of about 100 possible targets to send explosive devices to in, conjunct in conjunction to a supremacist formulated ploy believed to have been started in July. Recipients of the addressed explosives include Hillary Clinton, Obama's, Robert De Niro, CNN offices, and many other political leaders and organizations condemned by President Trump. Law enforcement has notified the additional people on the list and precautions have been taken to ensure all packages have been intercepted. Sayok is facing charges that could lead to approximately 50 years in prison. Now with the recent World Series game and the NFL making big trades, there is plenty happening in the world of sports. We're going to take it to Jordan Malik and Grace Lightfoot to cover all the recent events on Sportswire. Thanks, Liam, and welcome to Sportswire. I'm Grace Lightfoot. And I'm Jordan Malik. Starting off with the MLB, the Boston Red Sox are officially the 2018 World Series champions. The Red Sox defeated the Dodgers in five games to secure the team's fourth championship since 2004 after breaking an 86-year drought. Although, it was, although the win was an all-around team effort from the very beginning of the MLB season, Steve Pierce was rightfully rewarded as the World Series MVP after hitting three home runs and driving in eight runs in the five-game series. The Sox pitching was also extremely dominant, especially from lefty David Price. Price redeemed a very messy and dramatic regular season as he delivered two wins over 13 innings pitched, striking out 10 and allowing only three runs in the process. Price was stellar as he gave the Dodgers very little scoring opportunities. On the other side of the diamond, the Dodgers' Manny Machado is headlining a very impressive free agent class this winter. With Machado, this year's free agents include Bryce Harper, Craig Kimbrell, Dallas Keuchel, and Patrick Corbin. The Philadelphia Phillies and the New York Yankees over on the East Coast look to be active on November 3rd, with Philadelphia being the betting favorite to land both Manny Machado and Bryce Harper. Now in campus sports, the St. John's men's basketball team got some pretty good news recently. Last time we were here, we told you how Mustafa Haron had transferred from Auburn to St. John's in order to be closer to his family because of health reasons. At first, Haron's status was up in the air, uh, because, and he had to apply for a hardship waiver to be NCAA eligible. This dampened the very exciting news, for Haron playing next to Shimori Pons would create one of the best backcourt tandems in the whole country. However, Haron has officially received his waiver and is NCAA eligible. This is very exciting because now we can fully look forward to seeing him and Pond side by side, ready to take the Big East by storm. The NFL season has gotten underway, and the Giants are in first place in the draft order, that is. The offensive line hasn't been able to protect Eli Manning all year, which has led to questions about the 37-year-old signal caller. The Giants were sellers at the trade deadline as they shipped out Eli Apple and Damian Snacks Harrison to New Orleans and Detroit, respectively. Snacks trade has, met, has been met with much ridicule due to the compensation of a fifth-round draft pick for one of the league's best running stoppers. Around the rest of the league, teams got plenty of last-minute trades in at, in at the deadline. The L.A. Rams traded for Dante Fowler to add to their impressive defensive dream team. The Houston Texans added former Pro Bowler wide receiver De Demarius Thomas to add to line up next to DeAndre Hopkins, the best wide receiver in the game. The Washington Redskins traded for Ha Ha Clinton Dix to add to their impressive secondary, and the defending champs Philadelphia Eagles reloaded Carson Wentz's arsenal as they traded for wide receiver Golden Tate. All of the trades involved third-round draft picks or lower, except for the Dallas Cowboys when they traded for a first-round draft pick for Amari Cooper last week. Finishing up with basketball news, the Golden State Warriors are known for their explosive offense and great players, but this past week they took it to a whole other level. In the span of just four games, the reigning NBA champions had three different players score over 40 points in a single game. Steph Curry scored 51 points against the Washington Wizards, shooting 11 from 16 from three. KD dropped an impressive 41 against the New York Knicks, including 22 points in a five-minute span. 
And last but certainly not least, Clay Thompson scored 52 when facing the Chicago Bulls and set the record for most three-pointers made in a single game as he shot 14 for 24 beh from behind the line, bringing his three-point shooting percentage up to a whopping 18% in one single game. And people want to say LeBron went to the Lakers to win. <laughs> That's all we have for you today on SportsWire. I'm Jordan Malik. And I'm Grace Lightfoot. Back to Liam and Natalie. Thank you, Jordan and Grace. We'll be right back with more stories after this commercial break. Welcome back. Last week at McDonald's Birmingham, Alabama, an active shooter was stopped by an armed local who was leaving the restaurant with his two sons when he heard gunshots. The father quickly re-entered the McDonald's and in an act to protect those inside, fired at the masked shooter. Luckily, no one was seriously injured with the exception of the masked shooter who later died in hospital. Police are still unsure whether the masked man was attempting to rob the restaurant or to shoot someone inside. McDonald's employee, Marcus Washington, who was working just before a closing, called the unnamed father a hero. He continued that the event could have resulted much worse had the man not intervened on behalf of the customers inside. A big issue in this week's news, in response to an ongoing issue of illegal immigration, President Trump has planned to overturn the birthright citizenship order, a long-standing piece of legislation that grants citizenship to the, those born on U.S. soil. Trump argues that former President Obama's use of executive order to establish DACA, which protects undocumented child immigrants that come with their parents illegally, warrants his own use of the executive order to take down the birthright order. Such a self-proclaimed nationalistic approach to immigration has left the GOP split with the Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan, in his opposition and many lawmakers believe that an executive order may not be enough to revoke birthright, rendering Trump's sub efforts mute. Now in a break from serious topics, we take it to Delia Hernandez, who is attending a haunted house being held on campus earlier this week. Let's check it out. Hi guys, I'm Delilah Hernandez and I'm here with RSAs and their second annual Halloween carnival event. We're gonna go inside and check it out. Wow. I'm here with Anusha Hamid, the president of RSA, and I just wanted to ask her some questions about this planning this um, carnival this year. So it's been your favorite part with planning this. My favorite part is honestly like, when we're in the stages of planning, um, we're always in our office and we have like month, like weekly meetings trying to plan it, but the best part is when we're just sitting there and everyone, like 10 people throwing out ideas. People are like, what about this? What about that? What about that? And like my favorite part is just actually like taking those ideas and be like, we can implement it in this, do it in this, and that's just like my, my favorite What's part. What's been your favorite memory while you're actually in the carnival? So the haunted house is probably like my favorite thing because like, I don't think it's scary personally because <laughs> I've memorized the layout yeah. for so long. But um, today, when we were like today and last year, um, I was just walking around and some girl literally like ran out from like like in the middle of it, just oh like through the curtains, and she was like, "No, I'm not doing it." <laughs> so that was like it, it just shows that we did a good job, you know? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's it, guys. This is the second annual Halloween carnival hosted by RSA. Thank you, Delilah. That certainly looked like a great way to get into the Halloween spirit. We take it over to Entertainment Now. What's happening, guys? Hey, guys. Welcome back to Entertainment Now. I'm Kyla Allen. And I'm Christian Santiago. We're very excited to bring you all the best drama on this week's trending topics. First off, Kanye West released a statement this past Tuesday declaring his separation from politics. West says he has been used by people to spread political agenda. He fired off a series of tweets saying things such as, Quote, my eyes are now wide open. I've been used to spread messages I don't believe in, end quote. He indirectly blamed conservative Candace Owens for associating his name with the controversial Blexit merchandise. Owens released the design saying the logo was created by her dear friend and superhero, Kanye West, which is allegedly false. This must have been the breaking point for West. He claims to be taking his step back from politics to focus on being more creative with his musical career. Does this mean we can assume the rumored Kanye 2020 campaigns is calling it quits too? 
Hopefully. Uh, <laughs> I mean, who knows, honestly. But I think it's good that he's getting back to the music because... Let's just make Kanye West 2006 again. Yeah, um, let's, let's, let's bring it back. Ridiculous. <laughs> Keeping the legend alive, a Prince documentary is on the way. Director-producer Ava DuVernay confirmed another partnership with Netflix for a documentary on the late artist Prince. The project has full support from Prince's estate. In a remark to Deadline, DuVernay spoke fondly of the artist, saying, He shattered every preconceived notion, smashed every boundary, shared everything in his heart through his music. The only way I know how to make this film is with love and with great care. I'm honored to do so and grateful for the opportunity entrusted by me by the estate. Not new to meaningful storytelling, DuVernay was nominated for an Oscar in 2017 for her first Netflix doc, 13th. In news for video game fans, a new Netflix series based on the Nintendo classic The Legend of Zelda could soon be in the works. Netflix had recently initiated meetings with Castlevania showrunner Adi Shankar to produce an animated series based on the popular game. Beginning in 1986 with the original Legend of Zelda, and followed by 17 sequels, including the 2017 Game of the Year winner Breath of the Wild, the Nintendo hit has culminated a massive following. It is still unclear what type of storyline the tour will be follow, although it's likely to feature the Hyrulean hero Link. With the release of Castlevania Season 2 receiving huge success, there's no doubt why the possibility of a new video game based on has fans excited. Among the popularization of cartoon comedies, Fox has recently ordered a new animated series titled Duncanville, created by the minds of Saturday Night Live star Amy Poehler and The Simpsons producers Mike and Julie Scully. The 13-episode series will follow 15-year-old follow man character Duncan and his family. Amy Poehler will voice Duncan as well as his high-strung mother, Annie. The show will also include Poehler's Parks and Rec co-star Rashida Jones as well as Wiz Khalifa. According to Michael Thorne, the president of entertainment at Fox, Duncanville is one of the freshest animated concepts Fox has seen with an insane pedigree of comedic talent across the board. And right in time for a spooky season, Netflix has released a rapidly popular new series titled The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Inspired by the popular 90s through early 2000s comedy Sabrina the Teenage Witch. While the coming of age series includes many of the beloved characters, such as the half-witch Sabrina Spellman, on Hilda and on Zelda, it encompasses much darker and cinematic themes of witchcraft and Satanism. Uh, differing from the early sitcom's goofy antics. However, the series does incorporate humor as well, exploring various societal struggles, such as gender equality, women's rights, and class structure. Though the series diverts from viewers' expectations through controversial religious and cultural conventions, the clear consensual disappointment is that Salem, the favorite talking cat, was not given a voice. Sounds like a great show to me. It's fantastic. It's very, very good. Very dark. Jughead Jones and Archie Andrews are back in Riverdale for season three. From the same writer of the new ser Sabrina series, Roberto Aguirre Sacasa is introducing a totally new vibe to Riverdale. There are introductions of some different and out there storylines. Without spoiling anything, it's safe to say that the show is taking a very sci-fi turn. I can't help but wonder if Aguirre Sacasa was spending too much time with the adventures of Sabrina to step back into the realistic Riverdale. In the premiere, Betty's family are front and center in a cover-up of an ominous cult on the farm. But even the weirder part is, the even weirder part is that isn't the weirdest part. Apparently, there is a role-playing based board game intertwining with real life through the Riverdale High students. This game focuses on the Gargoyle King and taking the risks, taking risks that can be actually deadly. Of course, Betty and Jughead have already began their investigations. We'll have to wait and see how far this new sci-fi story will be pushed. That's really interesting because Sabrina was supposed to be in Riverdale at the end of season one. Really? Yeah, so it makes me wonder if they're going to try to connect the shows. Maybe that's what they're doing, and that's why it's... Maybe, which would be very interesting to see how that turns out. Yeah. Well, that's all the exciting uh, Hollywood news we have for you guys this week. I'm Christian Santiago. And I'm Kyla Allen. See you next time. Thanks guys. Now before the end of the show, we'd like to leave you off on a happy note. Here to shine a spotlight on the often overlooked positive side of news is Jenna Nice with Sunny Side Up. Thank you, Natalie. I'm Jenna Nice with Sunny Side Up, here to share some recent stories that are sure to put a smile on your face. The Streamy Awards took place on Monday, October 22nd in Beverly Hills. Usually the Streamies recognize and honor excellence in online video, including directing, acting, producing, and writing. But this year, at the 8th Annual Awards, a very good boy was recognized. 
A golden retriever who saved a woman from a rattlesnake was crowned Milkbone Dog of the Year by the company Milkbone. At just six months old, Todd the puppy put himself in the line of danger to save his owner, Paula Goodwin. He was bitten and spent 12 hours in the emergency animal hospital, but quickly was back on the road to health. His story went viral on social media and reached the CEO of Milkbone, who quickly sent him a care package of recovery treats. Milkbone says, the award is designed to celebrate bravery, overcoming obstacles, strong personality, and lo loyalty traits that make all dogs truly special. So basically, humanity does not deserve dogs. However, the true definition of selflessness is seen in the actions of a soldier who was helping with Hurricane Florence relief. Army medic Louise Ocampo from North Carolina was sent out on a hurricane relief trip to California. Unfortunately, when Ocampo returned home after spending several days at the New Bern Riverfront, his house had been completely trashed. In the ruins from thieves who stole electronics, jewelry, and family possessions, his girlfriend Kaylee and their child were horrified. Kaylee turned to Facebook to hopefully get some answers as to who had destroyed their home, but instead sparked a creation of online fundraiser to help get the couple back on their feet. The fundraiser reached $15,000, surpassing the goal of only $5,000. Ocampo was humbled by the generosity and did not want to abuse the kindness he was shown. He took the majority of the money and donated it to the Soldiers and Airmen Assistance Fund, as well as to other servicemen affected by Hurricane Florence. Ocampo stated that, seeing how generous people have been, I wanted to pay back to someone else who needed help. Now, we've all been told that there isn't a generation greater than that of World War II generation, and that's been recently proven by a foiled robbery in Los Angeles. This robbery wasn't just stopped by anyone. ABC reports that at age 91, William Daniels, who famously played the wise mentor Mr. Feeney in 19 sitcom Boy Meets World, stopped a burglary attempt on his house while at home with his 89-year-old wife. The robber attempted to enter the house through the back door, prompting Mr. Daniels to scare off the burglar by turning on the lights. The actor's publicist commented, luckily Mr. Daniels was able to frighten away the person and the LAPD quickly responded. That's all the cheerful news for now on Sunny Side Up. I hope these stories made your day a little more positive. Now back to Natalie and Liam. Thanks, Jenna, for the heartwarming stories. I can't think of a better way to wrap up. Well, that's all we have for this edition of Eye of the Storm. For all of the latest content, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at WRED-TV. Also be sure to check out WRED-TV.com to keep up with all of our episodes and find out how you can be part of our productions. From all of us here, I'm Liam Armstrong. And I'm Natalie Borokov. Thank you all for tuning in.